What's up guys? Today we're reviewing my favorite climbing shoe at the moment, the Mad Rock Drones Low Volume. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is a different type of video. Um, it's going to be my first shoe review and we're doing the Mad Rock Drones Low Volume. I'm calling it an honest review because I'm not going to sort of bog you down with the specs of the shoe, which you can get online or in any, any other reviews, but I sort of want to talk about what I specifically really like about the shoe and sort of things that as I've worn them for... I guess like half a year that I've noticed um, maybe bother me a little but um, before I start I will say this is my favorite shoe that I've worn so far um, which is only three um, but anyway so these are the low volume ones which again if you um, sort of read the description it just means it's a little more narrower in the toe box than the high volume uh, so that's for a little tighter fit if you think you have narrow shoes and the heel I mean is also a little more snug so yeah but that's pretty self-explanatory um, again some like general features of these shoes is the uh, super large toe patch which is great for obviously toe hooking um, you can see like that rubber is taking up almost like the front half of the shoe. This works outdoors and indoors. It's just super sticky and you don't have to be very precise, um, which I love. Um, so now the other part that people want to know about is the heel, which I think is one of the features that really attracted me to this shoe. It has a really round sort of molded heel, but which is nice is it has this lip here. You can see this is a really good angle. It has like that extra little bit of rubber that wraps around so when you're heel hooking you can be really precise. It's almost like cheating but um, I don't know I think it's really great. Um, I've never felt more secure when I'm trying to do a toe hook uh, which especially when you start going outdoors and just starting or starting to do harder climbs, harder grades, this is super important. Other parts of the shoe is the bottom sole is one continuous piece that goes you know from the the toe box back to the heel uh, in other shoes it's split up it's one part in the front one part in the back so it makes it a little more flexible i would say after these have been worn it does have some flex but not as much as maybe other high performance shoes i don't mind that because i like a stiffer shoe i think it just um i'm more comfortable with that and it sort of helps for durability i'm gonna get into the features of this shoe but this pair is, as you can see, it's really worn um, here. You can see on the toe, it's already started to sort of peel right here. So that's not good. So again, the rubber is sort of starting to peel. Um, but other than that, actually, it's like pretty, pretty, uh, pretty durable. You can see how dirty it is. No, you can't because it's too dark. But it should be yellow in there and it's like black. Anyway, we're going to switch these to my new pair just so it's a little nicer to look at. Ta-da! Good as new. Transformed. Um, but actually, I bought the high volume ones because um, they were on sale, but I wanted to try it. And um, it'll be, you know, just a little nicer to look at as I do the review. And I'll get into why I bought the high volume ones a little later as well. So... Um, but the features and basically the shoe is exactly the same. What uh, attracted me to the low volume shoe in the beginning was I was going from the Scarpa Instincts, which were my first, um, I guess, like more aggressive uh, bouldering shoe. And I sized those a little larger um, initially just because that's, you know, I was new to that whole thing. 
and after like six to eight months I got I had a lot of slippage in the heel and I got like the the heel squeakies you know when you step down so I wanted to get a shoe that looked to be more snug and had a really tight heel and that's what attracted me to the low volume ones because I read that they were you know a little narrower uh, narrow, more narrow in the toe box and also in the heel the closure is one single uh, velcro wrap what's nice is you can wrap it in the front or in the back another nice feature is this sort of like very soft stretchy sock um, like interior so uh, again it's easy to pull on and you just pull that right over and it's uh, it feels really comfortable um, I think it's supposed to be pretty breathable but my feet actually are like really they smell terrible I'm not gonna lie so uh, it doesn't really make a difference to me but this is nice because it's super soft um, and then so you have these two uh, loops so it, you can pull it on your heel easily which is really nice all right, so I've talked about the, you know, the toe hooking, the heel, or the, the heel hooking, all that good stuff, the closure, um, the stiffness, again, hard shoe, uh, not super flexible out of the box, but I like that. I'm doing a lot, I'm doing a lot of outdoor climbing, so I'd rather have a stiffer shoe than not. Um, so the rubber, obviously it'll last a little longer. Um, I'm gonna talk, and I'm gonna like pretty candidly talk about things that have given me issues um, that I didn't expect. So uh, I guess the first thing is a little disclaimer. The low volume shoes, which I'm wearing, I think I could have gone a half size up. So that's the first thing. Uh, I still really have to struggle sometimes to get them on if it's cold. Um, however, once I have them on for like a good 30 minutes, they sort of slip on and off. But that isn't without some uh, faults, issues. So one issue is um, the toe box. It is narrower, so it does feel like it's cramming my toes, especially my pinky toe. Um, again, this is all for the low volume. Uh, that's why I bought these. I wanted to try it out. So yeah, a little narrow on the toe box um, as advertised, but I thought I would break the sh that part of the shoe in. Never really did. And then this is something I didn't expect, but the heel compared to the Instincts, which I used to wear, it comes up a little higher on my Achilles than I'm used to. And uh, so I'm talking about like this part right here. So it, it actually sort of pinches my Achilles. Uh, when I was out of the box, it was super uncomfortable. And now it's fine, but I've noticed I sort of get like a little callus or blisters right on the back of the upper part of the heel. And I think that's from like slipping in my foot, you know, and it's rubbing against this part so much. And again, that might all be because I'm wearing the low volume shoes and they're a little tighter, a little snugger. However, that is sort of a sacrifice that maybe you want to make for higher performance. Again, I've never felt more secure in the shoes that I'm wearing now. They're super snug on any type of foot placement, but it is a little unfortunate that I still have discomfort after like six to eight months of wearing in the, uh, the pinky, like toe, in my toe box, and the Achilles part of my heel. Um, another like small thing is on the, uh, loops to put your toe in, I mean to get slide your heel in, the way it's constructed is they're sort of stitched onto the outside, uh, just um, on the exterior. I've noticed in my Scarpa shoes and La Sportiva shoes, the, the loops are actually sort of sandwiched, or the shoe is sandwiched in between the loops, so it's stitched here and stitched here. Uh, I think that's just Obviously that's how they manufacture it, but it does feel like all that pulling that you're doing to get your heel in, you know, it sort of affects the integrity of that uh, connection between these loops. So, you know, you might notice that it might start to fray. It's not really a big deal, but I just noticed that compared to Scarpa and La Sportiva, the way they um, sort of make these loops are is maybe less uh, less strong. I don't know. It's more less efficient. Um, and yeah, and then... So these I am going to try out pretty soon because my low volume ones are super worn. Here they are again. Yep, 
use the low volumes. Let's compare it. High volume, low volume. Oh, sizing, that's a big thing that everyone wants to know. So, um, and I mean, I wanted to know this when I was getting it, uh, compared to my street shoe, compared to other shoes. I wear a street shoe um, nine and a half, comparing Converse, Vans, uh, Adidas Ultra Boost, those are all nine and a half. I think that's a good, good way to compare stuff. People should know like what shoe you're wearing, but yeah. Anyway, this is a US 9, the Mad Rock Low Volumes. If I had to buy this again, I think I would size up because of what I said, the heel and the toe box. They're narrow for a reason, this is low volume, but more narrow than I actually want or expected. Um, if I was going for super high performance and I use these very specifically for, you know, the hardest projects, nine, yeah, fine, I would do it. But um, yeah, that's, this is the sizing, nine, low volume, high volumes. I got a, what did I get? US eight and a half. So because they're high volume, um, uh, you know, a little a little wider, I went for a little tighter. I was reading that online. So I sized it a half size down um, from the low volumes. This is a nine, eight and a half. I wear a nine and a half street shoe. Um, I did try these on, uh, I did try these on right out of the box when they were brand new. I mean, they still are. And it actually already felt better. Like this, I had a lot of trouble getting on. This sort of slipped in. I didn't really need the plastic. And I could already feel that without breaking it in, my toe, they felt a lot, my toes felt a lot more comfortable. They weren't really squished, but they were still, you know, like pointed down so I can get precise edging. Um, how can I compare this to my other shoes? Uh, the Scarpa Instincts, I wore the orange ones. Those were also a nine, I believe. That's important because I actually think I sized those up a little. I should have gotten those in an, in an eight and a half after like maybe six months they were really loose and actually when I first tried them on, even without really breaking them in, I had like the heel farty noises. So that's comparing them to my Scarpas. Uh, Comparing them to the La Sportiva Katanas, I um, don't do this. I got my Katanas in a seven and a half, which is like not the right move. Again, after you wear them, they sort of fit, but I think I should have gotten an eight and it would have been perfect. Um, again, low volumes, eight and a half. No, low volumes, nine. High volumes, eight and a half. Street shoe, nine and a half. I know that wasn't the most technical review, but I would consider that a really honest review of how I felt about these shoes after six-ish, seven months of wearing them, primarily bouldering, um, and honestly, I really love them. And yes, I did get these because everyone in the Eric Carlson bouldering crew wears Mad Rock. That's the reason I got Scarpas, because of Magnus Mitbo. That's the same reason that I am going to be buying and reviewing a pair of unparalleled shoes in the next month or two, because bouldering Bobat, um, I'm not gonna lie, that's how I choose my shoes. That's okay. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you wanna see more shoe reviews, um, maybe comparing them to my other shoes, I think that would be helpful, just because people always wanna know how it compares to certain shoes and how sizing goes. And I will see you guys in the next video.